a thin uniform rod of mass capital M and length capital L is bent at its center so that the two segments are now perpendicular to each other. Part A, find the location of the center of mass, x center of mass and y center of mass. Part B, find the moment of inertia about an axis perpendicular to its plane and passing through the center of mass. Part C, find the moment of inertia about an axis perpendicular to its plane and passing through the midpoint of the line connecting its two ends, that's point O, using the parallel axis theorem. Okay, so uh, let's start with part A. We would like to locate the uh, center of mass. So in order to find the center of mass, uh, we have to go a distance x uh, from the origin and basically uh, look at a mass element here and also do the same thing on the y-axis. So we can find the x component of the center of mass x center of mass as the integral x dm divided by the total mass m. Now you can see that this is a uniform mass distribution so the mass of this element here will be equal to the mass density lambda times dx where lambda is the total mass capital M divided by the total length capital L for a uniform distribution. Okay, so this is going to give us an integral from x equals 0 to x equals capital L over 2, capital M over L x dx divided by the total mass capital M. So this is 1 over L. You can see that the mass capital M cancels here. Uh, 1 over L integral of x dx is x squared divided by 2, which will be evaluated between 0 and capital L over 2. So this gives us 1 over 2 L times L square over 4, which is capital L over 8. And the same calculation can be done for the y-axis. So you will see that similarly, y center of mass uh, is equal to L over 8. Uh, so we find the position vector of the center of mass as L over 8 i hat plus L over 8 j hat or you can say x center of mass x component of the position vector is L over 8 and y center of mass is equal to L over 8. Okay so uh, we can report it this way or this way. Now, uh, there's an alternative approach here. You can see that this is by itself a rod with uniform mass distribution. So it has mass capital M over 2 with center of mass at L over 4. And this also has mass M over 2 uh, with center of mass L over 4 on the y-axis. So you could think of having two point masses at L over 2, L over 2 with uh, masses m over 2, m over 2, and for this discrete mass distribution, you can calculate the center of mass location, which would give you the same result, L over 8, L over 8. Now in part B, we are asked to find the moment of inertia about an axis perpendicular to its plane passing through the center of mass. Now you can see that if you put the center of mass he here and try to find the contributions from each uh, mass elements, it's going to be a very difficult task. So what I want to do instead is calculate the moment of inertia with respect to the rotations about the origin. So there's a uh, axis perpendicular to plane passing through the origin. Once I do that, I can use the parallel axis theorem to calculate the moment of inertia with respect to center of mass. 
So here is how it goes. The moment of inertia with respect to the origin IO will be integral from 0 to L over 2. This time it's x squared dm. Remember it's r squared dm. And then I have a contribution from the uh, y-axis 0 to L over 2 y squared dm. And this will give me, of course, these two integrals are the same. So it's twice uh, the integral 0 to L over 2 x squared and dm is once again lambda dx. So this will be equal to 2 lambda x cube divided by 3, which will be evaluated between 0 and L over 2. So this gives me 2 lambda over uh, 3, L cube over 8. And since lambda is M over L, so this will be 2M over 3L, L cube over 8, which gives me, because 2 will uh, make this 8, 4, ml squared over 12. Okay, so that's the moment of inertia with respect to uh, rotations about the uh, origin. So now using the parallel axis theorem, if I have an axis that is parallel to this one, located on the center of mass, uh, then the moment of inertia with respect to the origin will be I center of mass plus uh, M times D squared. D is the distance between the two rotation axes, but uh, basically that's the magnitude of the uh, center of mass position vector squared. This is our parallel axis theorem. Okay, now uh, we know that this is ML squared over 12. We want to know the moment of inertia for center of mass axis rotations plus M times what is the magnitude of the R center of mass L squared over 64 plus L squared over 64 which is 8 squared this is equal to r squared so you can see that uh, from this i center of mass will be equal to ml squared divided by 12 minus ml squared divided by 32 twice L squared over 64. So uh, this can be written as 8 ml squared over uh, 96. So just multiplying it by 8. And this can be multiplied by 3. 3 ml squared over uh, 96. And our final answer will be then I center of mass equals to 5 ml squared divided by 96. Okay, so that's the answer to part B. Now, part C asks me uh, to use the parallel axis theorem to find the moment of inertia uh, for an axis that is going through point O, which is the midpoint between its two ends. Now you can see that uh, the midpoint between the two ends will have components here, L over 4, L over 4. So it will be exactly the same distance. The distance of the center of mass uh, with respect to the origin and the distance of point O with respect to center of mass are the same. So basically, the moment of inertia uh, for this point which I have called IM, middle point, will be I center of mass plus M 
r center of mass magnitude squared so this will be equal to 5 ml squared over 96 plus m l squared over 64 plus l squared over 64 so this will give me 5 ml squared over 96 plus uh, ml squared over 32 you can see that this is identical to uh, the calculation that we have here for the origin and the answer will be once again 8 over uh, 96 ml squared or ml squared over 12. Alright. Okay, so in this problem we have a uniform rod that has been bent at its center to two segments uh, with uh, length L over 2, L over 2. Of course the mass will be also M over 2 and M over 2 here. And we want to know the center of mass location. Now the center of mass of this rod is at uh, L over 4. This one is at L over 4, so you can say I have two masses M over 2, M over 2 here. Now you connect these two and find the center that would give you L over 8, L over 8. Or you can do the calculation integral x dm over to total mass m, uh, where dm is lambda dx for a line linear mass distribution. If it's uniform, lambda is capital M over capital L, uh, and this gives us also uh l over 8 for x and y center of mass locations now part b asks us to find the moment of inertia with respect to the center of mass axis rotations but uh, that is difficult to do because you have uh, if you consider these uh, mass elements here this would be difficult to calculate uh, considering each mass element an easier method would be to find the moment of inertia with respect to the origin rotations or rotations about the origin axis passing through the origin that is integral 0 to l over 2 x squared dm and y squared dm for the x and y uh, components and this gives us ml squared over 12 now once you know uh, this you can calculate easily the center of mass axis rotations moment of inertia i0 is i center of mass plus md square or mr center of mass magnitude squared and uh, this is the parallel axis theorem because i have two axes that are parallel to each other and that gives me 5 ml over 96 now calculating the moment of inertia for the uh, rotations about point O here, which is uh, the, what I called I sub M. Uh, this is going to be equal to I, I sub O, which is the uh, origin uh, moment of inertia for the uh, when we have a pivot at the origin. Uh, this is basically uh, the same thing, the parallel axis theorem. Uh, I center of mass plus M R center of mass squared. These two distances are the same. You can see here uh, the midpoint will be at L over 4 and L over 4. So we find the same answer we found for the origin, which is ML squared over 12.